I am here today. I have a beautiful guest on who I cannot wait for you to meet. Uh, she's already joining us. How are you doing, my friend? I'm fantastic. I'm just trying to sort myself out. I'm usually on the interviewer spot. I'm so excited to be on your on your show. I, I, my show? Oh my god, okay. I'm gonna get in touch with my like inner Oprah right now for mm -hmm. our episode together. You look just <laughs> like her. So it's like totally fine. You look exactly like her. <laughs> Oh my I was so, so excited that uh, I was on Oprah today when I joined on. <laughs> Everyone, this is Barbie. I'm going to give you a little bit of information on her. Barbie is known for her infectious passion and continuous resilience. She is a thriving entrepreneur, a charismatic and experienced speaker, as well as a writer and podcast guest. She constantly is giving back. To this world and one example that of that is the community that she's created for bell's palsy survivors called bell's palsy talk with barbie where she encourages this is my favorite part her followers to focus on self-care while learning their true purpose and can you give us a like tell me don't even tell me tell the world a little bit more about what you do um, okay, so Bell's Palsy, um, just for those who are joining us who may be unfamiliar with it, is a facial paralysis um, caused by a virus that attacks the seventh cranial nerve. So basically, so you have a nerve here um, beside your ear uh, on each side, and it's a perfect mirror of nerves in your face. And when the virus attacks that nerve right there, your face becomes completely paralyzed, just to, just to kind of, um, just, just kind of, that's the short story of it. And it's sudden onset. So you wake up and your face within 24 hours after that is completely paralyzed on one side. So um, it's very traumatic. And there, you know, it was 2015 when I woke up with Bell's palsy. There wasn't a ton of stuff out there. Um, I just kind of, okay, guess I got to deal with this. Um, I was very fortunate. I have about 85% recovery. Fast forward to COVID. Um, we lost our family business because of um, COVID. We had to shut down. I was lost. I didn't know what to do. Um, a friend of mine suggested um, that I kind of start uh, Instagram feed for Bell's Palsy. Okay, I'll try. The main kind of thought, I thought, okay, well, we can talk about maybe, um, you know, treatments or remedies, doctor kind of stuff. And it's evolved into so much more. Mm -hmm. Um for me, it's really turned into a community where I have lots of people that I can really lean on and we talk about things we have in common. And as humans, that's something that is always just so um, important is to find people that you have something in common with that can support you through whatever your your true purpose and things that you're you're meant to do. You're meant to do in a healthy way. So that's what that's turned into. And I just love it. Just love it. Um, made so many friends and be able to chat with them and also do interviews like this to allow mm -hmm. people to tell their story and use their voice. Um, one of the metaphysical reasons for Bell's palsy is that you've lost your voice. You're not using your voice. Mm -hmm. So your mouth becomes paralyzed. And that's something that we talk about a lot about, you know, putting, you know, putting yourself first, making sure you're taking care of yourself, hanging out with people that are good for you, um, encouraging your dreams and things that you should be doing. Um, in your best interest and on your best journey. Yes, and Abby sharing community is critical. You're doing a beautiful thing with your platform. And I can't agree more. When you understand with your whole heart that you are not alone, it gives you a different motivation to keep going, mm -hmm. almost a different inspiration. You know, it's going through our struggles becomes very isolating and lonely. So when you can see people who are going through similar things, but also have perspective or have come out on the other side, it gives you hope. And right. Hope yes. As long changes. as you feel like, hey, they're like me. Mm -hmm. And I think that you and I talk about that a lot. It's very important for us to, you know, people who are maybe three or four steps ahead of us, not mm -hmm. 25 steps ahead of us. Um, I, you know, was watching Mel Robbins on a podcast and she was talking about a, bi a big thing that why vision boards don't work for some people a lot of the times is because we put these huge mansions and big lofty goals, which are great. We want to be working towards those big, massive goals, but it's, you also want to keep in mind, you want to have something that's attainable in six months or a year. So somebody like, 
you know, like us, you know, we have a couple thousand followers. That's attainable for a person to get to next step. You don't need to start with the goal of having a hundred thousand followers or having a, a podcast that a million people listen to. You know, for me, if I have one person reach out to me and say, you know, I was having a bad day today and I listened to your podcast and I feel better now, that's a win. And yeah. so we want to have goals and surround ourselves with people who are doing similar things, maybe a couple steps ahead of us to make mm -hmm. sure that we're feeling motivated to get that next step and ask for help. But it's not this big, lofty, huge thing. Um, we can work towards that, but it's, but it's not too far away. And it totally reminds me about my recovered perfectionism and that like all or nothing mentality. Mm -hmm. So when we're seeing someone who's, which social media is really tough for, who's killing it on the other end of the spectrum, it doesn't, it, it shuts us down. So mm -hmm. many of us struggle with that. So we don't even have the inspiration to take that next Try. step. And that is why today um, we're going to be focusing on later. I'm going to be getting you to share that baby step with my community because that's something that I really strive for and is why I am where I am now because trying to show up perfectly wasn't working and I know you dealt with the same thing which is why we're such kindred spirits and one thing I uh, for my community to know one thing I really value and admire about Barbie is I've seen her growth I saw with she was before who is this beautifully imperfect human like we all are but I've seen her transform and shine her light and I was hoping maybe Barbie you could share a little bit about what did a normal day look like for you before you started showing up for yourself and how showing up for yourself and listening to your body changed um well I would say if we use Bell's palsy just as kind of that that switching point because it you know it's a it's a a definitive definitive point. Um, you know, at the time my kids were eight and six, I um, had a life that checked all the boxes. Right, I was married, lived in the suburbs, had a big house, had great parties, had lots of friends. Um, go 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 all the time, and there wasn't necessarily anything that you put your finger on that was one thing um but there was a lot of little things where i wasn't um yeah taking care of myself when i started counseling shortly after that you know the counselor as many of us that go to counseling they say oh you know what do you do for self-care well, self-care I, I don't know i get a pedicure once in a while like i don't yeah. know i didn't even know what it was <laughs> yeah. so you know self-care and just starting to sit so when i when i got bell's palsy i literally lied in bed for two weeks um you know it's a virus you feel crappy and um plus just the trauma of your face being paralyzed and there's a lot of things obviously that you explore in your mind and that was something that really realized like you know what life still went on i was in bed there for two weeks and everybody was fine so it's not you don't have to do everything for everybody you can say no you know i i, I don't feel like doing that but I, I, just, I, I don't, you don't need to say why you don't need to say any, I just don't, I don't want to do that. And no is a full well, and I, you know, God forbid somebody would invite you over for dinner and you, and you wouldn't go. I mean, that would be rude. So, you know, you just jam in everything all the time. And as women, not saying that men don't do this, but you know, typically as women, we jam all this stuff in because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, they, Oh, they invited us over, so we have to invite them over, or whatever the whatever the thing is. It doesn't matter what the exact um, example is. You know, that's just kind of the feeling that we have. So we have to do it because we don't want to let anybody down. Well, what about letting ourselves down? Mm. You know, and then what happens is you literally something happens in your health, and it doesn't matter whether it's Bell's palsy or cancer or anything like that. Your any kind of repressed emotions will manifest in in disease. Um, you know, Gabor Métis that we love. I just saw last night. Is that how I say the name? I don't, I can, I can never remember how I say his name. I Gabor. don't know. You're nailing it though. Okay. Well, whatever. Gabor? <laughs> yeah. So he, um, you know, he's one of my favorite authors. I have to read his books in chunks because there's so much information to take away. Mm -hmm. And just last night, I wanted to share this today. 
he said that there was a study of 2,000 women. This was done recently in the States. He didn't say a year. 2,000 women over 10 years. And it said even the women who were unhappy in their marriage. So they were all unhappy in marriage. The ones who talked about being unhappy were at a far less likely chance of dying than the ones who were in unhappy marriage and not talking about it. So they're still mm. in an unhappy situation. You know, we all have unhappy situations in our lives. You hold all that crap in, the crap has nowhere to go. And it just manifests in disease, whether that is, you know, Bell's palsy, the flu, like anything, you know, that, that comes from somewhere. And on Bell's palsy talk, we talk a lot about, um, you know, it's a virus. So it comes from the, the same virus, similar to like shingles, chicken pox, cold sores, herpes, that, that virus. Now, everybody has that. I mean, 99.9% .9 of people get cold sores and they have those viruses in their body and chicken pox. So why did I get Bell's palsy and you didn't get Bell's palsy? Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I live in similar climate. We live in similar cities. We live in similar lives. We have very similar situations. It is not, it is, very interesting to me and it's not a coincidence in my opinion that certain diseases happen to certain people well and i this is something i love about you as i just keep adding to my list but because you have this beautiful outsider's perspective now that you can really look at it and see okay what can i gain from this why is this here what is my body telling me? And that is kind of, it is our theme for today, how listening to your body helps you show up for yourself. And by you dealing with this huge traumatic thing in your life, as Bell's palsy is, when it comes out of nowhere, it forced you to slow down and listen. Is that something that you're continuing to do now? Is that a practice for you? Um, I think that up and down throughout my life, like different periods, you know, I, I never really kind of had this big commitment where it's like, oh, I'm going to slow down and just start listening to myself. I think COVID did that more for me mm -hmm. as it did with most of us, um, is that there's just a lot of stuff that's not as important as it used to feel like it was. And I have definitely slowed down a lot. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm getting older, <laughs> but um you know, it's, it's, we can't do anything if we're constantly, you know, what's that quote that we like? If you, if you, if you uh, don't want to get burnt out in your life, stop living like you're on fire. Mm -hmm. And I think that mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. so many of us were doing. You're living in a constant state of anxiety because you're never, you never stop for a second. Which you never, then you don't have the awareness of even where you're at, mm -hmm. right? So you, that's something that I preach so much is that slowing down, even if it's only for 10 minutes a day, taking that time to check in, that awareness, that's what's going to help you start to see what's going on in your body so you can listen. When we don't slow down, it's like we're running with our ears plugged and our eyes closed. Well, I was just going to say, I think a lot of the reasons why it's so hard for people to slow down and listen is because we're scared of what we're going to hear. Uh, so yeah. whether that's, you need to leave your marriage, you need to stop drinking, you need to whatever, all the things mm -hmm. we know what the problems are there. There, there's no way anybody can tell us, you know, that, you know, if you stop for a second and you really tune into your body that you can't hear what your body's telling you, we just don't want to hear it. And mm -hmm. Um, that's okay. So what we do is we put our head in the sand and you just keep going. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then you get smacked upside the head or you get Bell's palsy or you get sick or you break your leg or something happens to, I mean, yes, there's the slowing down part as an overall theme, but there's also, there's more, more to it. So say, for example, we take Bell's palsy and the first thing I did was look up the metaphysical reason for it. And it was that you'd lost your voice. I mean, I, my mom obviously thought that was hilarious because really like you don't. I do voice. that all the time. As soon as I see it, a type of bird, <laughs> like, I'm like, what does this bird represent for me today? <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't stop talking. Yeah. So <laughs> I 
but you're not using your voice and standing up for yourself. And when I read that, I was like, oh my God. Because I was at the point in my life where I didn't even, it's not that I wasn't sticking up for myself. I didn't even know what I would stick up for. So when you stop and think like, hey, what do I need? I didn't even know. Never mind, start, you know, asking for it. I mean, when you surround your people with, when you're surrounding yourself with people who are obviously more open to listening to your needs. I mean, obviously that's the situation you want to put yourself in first. Um, and then, you know, you know, just having the courage to kind of talk through it. Cause sometimes you don't even know, you know, I was talking about that with my husband yesterday. I mean, we just need to, in relationships kind of be like, Hey, okay, so this isn't working for me right now. I don't know what I need. So can we try this? And maybe that is it. Maybe it's not. Maybe, you know, maybe it's not, who knows. Um, we, we, we never, we're not our own mind readers. And, you know, you just need to kind of try different things to see what works for you well, and what doesn't. And it's so much more about the question of what do I need? Mm -hmm. And then getting curious and even asking and being okay in the beginning that you don't have that answer there because you're shifting your thoughts into that internal check-in. And that, that's the bread and butter. Like that is where we want to get to because you're going to keep asking and it's going to start coming. But right. Is, yeah. Even just being willing. Yeah, yeah. Being willing. That's what, you know, one of my faves, Gabby Burns, you always says like, I am willing, even if we just sit in and you don't know. And a lot of the times I just say, I am willing to hear what I need. I am willing to whatever. I'm willing to be open. I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing. And then it'll come to you. But the thing is, is something that's going to be something you need to do or improve or something that's on your true path isn't going to be like, oh, I'm willing to hear that I need to go to the candy store and buy 14 pounds of bulk gum bears. Right? Like, I mean, I know that's a dumb example, but you know what I mean? It's not going to be yeah. something easy and fun. Yeah. So um, my friend Mary, who's on here right now, she was actually just on my talk the other day. Oh, Heather. So she, Heather and Mary are chatting on here. And Mary said, I needed, to, even with Bell's palsy, I know I need to slow down more. Yes. And then Heather says, I, I've read it's a trauma response, keeping ourselves busy. It's easier to avoid the work and keep ourselves busy. And that's exactly what we just said. It's easier it's an avoidance mechanism, yeah. it's a trauma response or avoidance mechanism or whatever, depending on what has happened in your own personal life. Of course, that's what it is. If it's, it's similar to, you know, if, if you've done something to upset me and I'm avoiding the conversation, what am I going to do? Just pretend it didn't happen. And I'm going to keep myself super busy and distracted over here. So if we're constantly busy and constantly go, 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 we don't have to step back. We have an excuse to be like, well, I'm super busy. I mean, I'm super successful or, or I make great money or whatever the thing is. The go, 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 go. You are giving yourself a reason to not stop, but you will. Yeah. If you don't do it yourself, you, the universe will stop you at some point. And, um, and it's also a habit too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So even then we have this, this pattern where we're like, okay, now we're growing and we're realizing, but we're stuck in this habit. And I think part of my learning curve, thank you, Heather, when I was learning to listen to my body is for one, growing up, I learned, I didn't trust my body because I was such a big feeler and an empath and all these emotions would take over. I actually kind of disassociated from it. Mm -hmm. There was, emotions would come up. I'd be like, no, I'm not allowed to feel mm -hmm. that. That's too big. I'm being or too scary. Reactive. It's too much. Yeah. I don't know how to handle it yet. And then I lived so much in fight or flight in that survival mode. My body wasn't always, it was telling me my truth, right? But I had to really start distinct, distinguishing the difference between when I was reacting versus when it was like, it's always talking to you, but I don't need mm -hmm. to listen and understand. Mm -hmm. I, I'm in fear right mm -hmm. now. I need to run, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, why am I reacting this way? Oh, I really don't like conflict. Why don't I like conflict? Because I get afraid that they're not going to like me. And that 
is such a tough thing for me to work through. So it's like, it started with me realizing my shoulders were up around my ears, but it's, there's this layering mechanism to really understanding what's going on for you at the, at the bottom, at the seed. And, what's the, and as you, problem? and as you keep saying the way, you know, if that's an overwhelming thing for people, the way is just to ask and be willing to, to start. It's not like when you decided, you know, you're doing the work when I started doing the work, um, you know, it happened overnight. I mean, just what we were saying about people we follow on social media, they didn't have a hundred thousand followers. They started with two mm -hmm. followers and that's why it's so important to, you know, follow people who you really identify with and can be like, Hey, you know, like she's a mom like me, or she's around the same age as me, or she's been through the same things as me. And that's why your community and my community are so similar. I mean, yours, it doesn't matter that it's not Bell's palsy or any, it doesn't matter. That's why programs like, you know, AA and Weight Watchers mm. and all those are so successful. It's because you're sitting around with people who have been in the same trench as you. So when you sit beside somebody, so a story I was saying the other day is when I joined Weight Watchers, I was about 20 and I was in college and I'm not dancing anymore and still eating like I was. So I gained a bunch of weight. And I heard, you know, my, oh, my aunts go to this Weight Watchers thing. So I'm going to go try it out. And I went. First week, okay, kind of figured it out, lost a little bit of weight. Second week, I'm sitting there and there was this lady. She was about 50. I mean, really, let's be real. She's probably like 30 or 40, but at the time, every week. <laughs> you were 20. So. I was 20. So she, <laughs> anyways, um, doesn't matter. She was older than me. And I just said, I'm like, oh, I mean, I'm really, I'm, I like that I lost a few pounds, but I'm so hungry all the time because your body just has to adjust. You know, I'm eating. You're not depriving yourself. You're just not your body. So now looking back, being more educated than I know, obviously my body was just cutting out the crap and I just was kind of in withdrawal a little bit. She says popcorn. She goes, air pop, popcorn, put a little bit of margarine on it, some salt. She goes, I couldn't survive without it. And that's just kind of an easy little thing where there's no need. You don't need to explain. You don't need to explain your feelings. She was there. She was been doing it forever, but she was there. She had a first week too. And that's the same as Bell's palsy or recovery, like, you know, from anxiety and perfectionism or whatever it is that we're dealing with. Seek out people who know so that you don't have to explain the whole story all the time. Like, obviously, people are there, you know, with Bell's palsy to support us. But they don't understand. You know, when I talk to Heather and Mary and we talk about straws, well, people with Bell's palsy, it's tough to drink. Okay, so all different degrees of whether you're how well your your mouth works. Our big joke is somebody found a great straw. Okay, well that's a great <laughs> joke, right? And you can understand that. Obviously, think that's great, but you don't know. So yeah. that's why it's just so great to surround yourselves with people who get it and make you feel important and valuable. I mean, if you don't feel important and valuable, you can't really get much done. Well, and when you're doing the work to find that importance and that value within yourself it's so phenomenal to be able to see other people doing the same because mm -hmm. our ego will get in the way and that inner critic and inner bully that we've been driving our entire lives, right? It's going to jump in and want to take over. So surrounding yourself with those people who have the same goal and are making those changes is imperative. And to see them stumble and pick themselves back up. Yeah, That's for sure. Everything. And to be there to help them and just be like, hey, just a reminder, you know, one of my good friends is going through a tough time today, messaging her just this morning being like, okay, let's go. Like, you're great. You know, we need to take yes some time. I mean, this is something for us to talk about too. I mean, I struggle too telling people with Bell's palsy, okay, well, you want to rest and you want to take care of yourself, but you need to have, there's a very fine line between that and then the wallow state. Hmm. so you know yourself you know you and I have talked about this before like at what point like it's not good to have that toxic kind of positivity where you're like no you're fine like don't worry about it you're pushing the feelings down but then there is a very, very fine line and we all know that line where it transforms into like wallow mm -hmm. and that's when it's, it's really important to surround yourself with people being like okay enough like <laughs> time to get up now and 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 do something that's good for you or whatever's next in your life and value
validate, okay, it's all right that this is hard. It's all right that this is a struggle right now. What is the baby step we're taking today? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like one little thing at a time. Moving towards your bigger goals. So for example, um, I'm really excited and a project I wanted to share with you. I've told you a little bit about it is is uh, a book collab that I'm working on now with, um, there's 25 of us um, from the Bell's Palsy community. My friend Amy put together this book collab and it's turned into so much more too. I mean, we chat on community chats and things like that. So I've always had a dream of being an author and writing books, massive goal. Like I was saying, so you're saying, okay, you take baby steps, you write blogs, you talk like this. Mm -hmm. Cool. Like now what? Okay. I'm, open I'm willing and I'm not even joking like I'm open I'm willing oh I need to be writing more run straight a book that was my goal this year and I was thinking oh it's kind of getting towards the end of the year okay I guess that's not going to happen literally get a message in my <laughs> inbox the universe uh, comes knocking yeah <laughs> that and I mean and I've been working towards it I mean not as much as I want to I was saying to you this morning you know I do I need to start showing up for myself writing more that's that's self-care for me and get a message in my inbox from Amy and she got a grant from the Center for Facial Recovery to do a book collab and she was she was in one a couple years ago and she she's like well I she has Bell's palsy she's like but I don't know anybody with Bell's palsy so her idea was to bring people together who have facial paralysis to write a book seems like a great idea and of course you know me I'm like I'm in. <laughs> let's go <laughs> and I have had a dream of writing a book and I'm like Oh my God, this is perfect. Cause I don't know how to like, like, I mean, okay, fine. I'm very capable of sitting down and figuring out how to write a book, but that's a lot of words. Okay. It's really big. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I said, Hey, let's throw it up on Bell's palsy talk and see if we get any responses. I think she got, got well, I mean, we filled up right away. So we have yeah. 25 authors that have qualified for it. We're putting together this book club and I'm super excited. And the point is just coming back to your baby steps and just being willing to work towards your goal. So of course I'm envisioning being obviously Gabby Bernstein being on stage. I've written books. Well, she didn't start in a theater full of 50,000 people. So I have to bring my ego back down. Like you were saying earlier, just because I'm sitting on a call or a talk and we have 10 people, 20 people, whatever, who cares? One person, no people. If, If we had no people show up today, does that mean that we shouldn't have done it? No later people will watch it yes that gives us a jumping point for the next time like who knows gabby bernstein i know i follow her and i literally stalk her i love her <laughs> it's alarming she's okay with it but she gave her first talk in a library and like one woman showed up so you know we can't compare ourselves to people who have already made it i mean we got to start somewhere you know um mel robbins she wrote her first book did her first audio book in her house she's like edited the sound and she's like, there's paper shuffling everywhere and she's like it was horrible i don't even know why i put that out but you know what it's my favorite one i want to listen mm-hmm. to real i don't care about yeah. you know people being perfect i mean you and i talk about it all the time we tried being perfect it didn't work so well no we were terrible i didn't even enjoy it. it yeah there was no like there was no enjoyment to that aspect there was this facade up front that felt good that outward validation but then you're empty inside my cousin Cousin calls it junk food therapy mm. or something like that. I can't mm. remember what the exact term is where it's like, yeah, like that outside perfection where you're getting that quick fix, mm-hmm. but then like inside you're not nourished where you're always just doing stuff, you know, for, for other people. And, and then, you know, we turn around and wonder why we don't get the results we want or why we're not getting back from them what we put in. Well, it's because it's not real. It's coming from a place of, of emptiness and just, um, well, insecurity and ego and we haven't learned yet like you have to learn and start trusting the importance of showing up for yourself and that self-care that soul care really getting in touch and doing the work to figure out who you are and it's similar to what you're saying about filling a stadium of people who are there to listen versus one person showing up in the library with this movement of loving you and listening to your body it's it needs to start somewhere Mm -hmm. and And it's messy and it's gross and it's not like you know 
So have you watched Dead to Me on Netflix with Christina uh, Applegate? Yes, but okay. like, I haven't watched the new season. Okay, well, well <laughs> she's, I mean, I mean, I love her. She's going through a heck of a time in her life now. I think it's MS that she has now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I read about that. So I was rewatching it again just because I think she's amazing. Now that show, I mean, it's nuts, but it's, it's messy. The grief and the stuff that they show, um, obviously it's a, you know, it's a, it's a drama. So there's a lot of stuff that's ridiculous, but the way that the grief and the messiness and the figuring stuff out is, is shown is real. And, you know, when we joke around about in, in, um, our quotes and all this about like messy cry and it's gross that that's what it is when you, you decide to re hash everything in your life and one of the coaches I had probably about 10 years ago and she said that she goes once you take the blue pill now the blue pill means that you you know you're trusting in the universe and you're 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 putting your faith into something whether it's the universe or God or spirit or whatever you describe it whatever as. you want to call understand it. that there's a larger situation you know out there and you were just part of it You've taken the blue pill. You can't go back. And, you know, at certain points when I'd be in the cow, I'm like, I just want to give the blue pill back. I don't want the blue pill. Like, it's a lot easier when we're just, like, in our little, like, oh, it's easier, but it's not better. It, you know? It takes you out of that victim mentality and gives you, you have to start becoming accountable. Yeah, that's, that's right. what it is. I, it's it, it isn't, but it's free. It's yeah, free, absolutely. Yeah. Right, and it this feeling of like not being alone, and this is the reason I can step into my purpose is because I know I'm guided. When it was just because, like, well, I had an idea. Wouldn't it be nice? I could, couldn't step forward because of that fear. Like, how do I have that in me? There's no way that that imposter mm -hmm. syndrome sets in so strong right? Yeah, so no one's gonna listen way, to me. Yeah, yeah. This is a way for your like inner champion, that voice inside your head that's trusting and believing in you to start growing, right? And that's such a big component to that self care and that soul care. Which well, is my, sorry, go ahead. Barbara. Back to listening to your body um, mm -hmm. is you sit there and you lie there, like just for example, I was gonna say, okay, so this book, how do I get this book out? <laughs> obviously, literally, you're obviously the quick answers are like, Ooh, start reading. Like your brain will yeah. literally, I have Logic. an inner dog dialogue that's like literally eye rolls sometimes. Cause you're like, really? You, you're meditating on this? Like, let's go. I've been telling you yeah. for five years. Like, this is literally what's in my head, right? You know what you've been needing to do for five years. Let's go. Fine. You're good enough. Ah, Barbie, come on. <laughs> and then I'm like, Okay, so then you talk that girl down. See, for me, obviously, there's the ego and the imposter syndrome. But then there's also the one being like, seriously, mm. you still haven't started. And that I think is, is my cheerleader, but that's a little bit toxic. Because it's like, you also, we also need to understand we can't do everything all at once. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that I that I, I kind of wanted to touch on today, too, is we can have, have you can have everything you want in life. Sometimes you just can't have it all at the same time. And I read that and I was like, whoa, right? Mm -hmm. So when I talk to younger women, especially ones who are exactly like I was, and I know you were too, where it's like, okay, so I'm going to go to high school. I'm going to go to university. I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to get a great job. I'm going to get married. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to get a good house. Okay. Well, like, oh, it, it, yes, you will. But there's like, relax <laughs> like you don't have to do it all at once and you can still be an author or a blogger or anything when you're 80 or whatever and the universe you put that on the universe doesn't mean you get to decide when it is or how it looks sometimes oh there it is that's the one that has been my big growth these last few months is just trusting in that divine timing yes it's yeah. gonna happen for you but that doesn't mean it's going to be on your timeline. It's going to be so much better. Mm -hmm. It's like letting go of that. Stop focusing on the how. And all of a sudden, someone's like, hey, I have an idea, Barbie. 
And you're like, damn. So as soon as you let it go, that happens. Actually let it go. See, that's the thing. Like you can't sit there and be like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I love, I'm gonna let it go. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. You're like, yeah. Like, yeah. That like re- actual. <laughs> this is this is what I do now. Is like I physically like release and. Yeah. It, because we got to make it somatic too. Mm-hmm. We want to tie it all together. Just getting stuck in our brain. We've done that for so long. It's not always the answer. And it doesn't just take one time. I mean, that's the other thing too. I mean, we're old now. I mean, I'm 42. It's not like I just woke up one day and like you're saying, okay, change to self-care. You go through phases and then you're like, oh, haven't been doing that. Oh, you got to go back. One step forward, 18 steps back, four steps forward, like 18 steps back. That's what life's like. Um, I mean, maybe not for some people. I I think um, that's realistic. And but for me, I changed it more into instead of thinking 10 steps back, I think pausing where I am. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that 10 steps back always gave me this like, oh, what's the point? Now? Yeah, I like, like that. Yeah, I might as well just give up or whereas or I'm a loser. Like, okay, yeah, we're on a pause. Mm-hmm. A change is as good as a rest. Like you need this moment too. again, coming back to that divine timing and that trust. Which we, um, I want to head into my last question for you, Barbie, as we wrap up today, because we just love talking. We could go on for hours. <laughs> Is the whole idea of behind those baby steps, what would you like to share with our community today as your baby step for that soul care and that self care and getting in touch with you? Where do we start? I think just allowing yourself to ask allowing yourself to be important enough to like actually Mm -hmm. ask like I would have no problem turning around to probably literally anybody even a stranger in the grocery store and being like oh is there something that I could help you with or is there something that you need or are you struggling with that can I help you with that Mm -hmm. grocery cart I think that allowing yourself to just sit there if, if, if you're a person that's having struggling with this is just to say okay I'm going to give myself five minutes or two minutes or one of 30 seconds whatever little step you need to take and you're just going to sit there and you're literally just going to ask yourself say what do I need today and I think you've posted about that before you don't have to do it you just need to be willing to listen to yourself for a second giving yourself a chance to talk maybe um and then the more that you do that you know something will come up something will come up you know what you need you're the only person that actually knows um and we spend a lot of time asking other people for advice or their input or their this or their that and that's just a form of insecurity because you're just saying that your opinion isn't good enough you know what you need and your body reading that podcast listening to that podcast reading that book asking your friends yeah I used to like almost do a whole list to get everyone's opinions to figure out okay well what am I going to do like learning to listen to your body also builds this trust with yourself where then you can find that voice and start speaking Mm -hmm. from your heart and speaking your needs but it's those baby steps and if that baby step is just the question even without the answer that that it feels this big but it's a quantum leap like you are now like you have entered a new chapter this is a whole freaking new book Mm -hmm. and you're just on on page one and I think that if someone does struggle with that it's just like you know what would they say to us you know would they Andrea would say oh I'm gonna do a talk but if only one person shows up is it worth it of course they're gonna say yes of course you're gonna help that one person Or yes, it's going to turn into something bigger. And that's that, well, if I'm only going to do it for 30 seconds, then what's the point? Just give it a try. You have nothing to lose. And I I think think this is Mary. Yeah. So Mary Mary sharing. I love this. She's amazing. She's like, so she's a boxer. So cool. (laughs) I'm also allowing myself to say no more often as a part of taking care of myself and not feel guilty. Or that I feel like I have to explain myself. And that's what we kind of started earlier. You can say no and turn something down without being rude. Hey, I'm just, I'm not not feeling up to it. I'm not, you know, I need to take care of myself tonight. I need to have some time on my own and not feel guilty about it. You can, Mm. 
you can feel disappointed or, oh, I kind of wish I went, but I really need to take care of myself. You know, it can be both, um, but you don't owe anything to anybody. And you have have to allow for growing pains. Mm -hmm. It's oh, yeah. not going exactly. to feel good right off the bat saying no, right? You have to allow for that. And then when that guilt comes in, I want you to talk to it. Oh, yeah, that's hard. That's yucky, and it's yeah. because I care so much about those other people. But I am proud of me for showing up for myself today. And though, like those little internal conversations, you're just building the magic. And I, I think that it's also really important, you know, um, I was sharing earlier, you know, I was talking to my husband last night, or you talk to, you know, a friend or somebody that you can really trust and count on that has your best interest in heart, you know, I can, I can say to him, I can say, Hey, you know, please remind me when I'm doing that. Or, you know, I'm, I'm feeling really guilty and I'm like, talk through it. You don't need to do it on your own, but you need to honor the feelings that you have. Like if you need to talk it out, you know, that's important, uh, important as well. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your time today, Barbie. You know how much I love you. Um, is that, can you just share with my community where they can get a hold of you? Absolutely. Um, so everything that I kind of have and all the projects I'm working on, um, you can find on my website, barbiewharton.com. Um, and you can link from the uh, profile at Bell's Palsy Talk. Everything's all there. I'm super excited about the book coming out next year with the author collab. So I'll definitely be coming back on here to tell you about that because I think it's going to help so many people, even, you know, of course, without facial paralysis, uh, about just different experiences that shape our lives and, and, and turn things around. Same things as you have, you know, something happens.